All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking time out of your day for this. We appreciate it. Uh, and sorry for the delay. Uh, just had a few things to wrap up before we were able to get online. So um, we'll get started with uh, opening it up to uh, the CTA to present their, their counter proposal from the last session. All right. Okay. You can take it. <clears throat> Just one. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, sorry, we took us a little time to kind of meet together uh, prior to uh, getting here. So what we're passing out now is Article 8, uh, Compensation and Benefits, Section A, Salary. All right, just to kind of know, let you know how this is structured, uh, the blueprint you'll see there is language that we will have to sit down and go through depending on salary and how things work out on the other aspect of things. But we did want to address some area, other areas in this section of the contract. All right. And uh, in the first paragraph, of, I'm sorry, in 1A, uh, you'll see where we have the strikeouts in, in red and a couple of dates got the strikeout on them in error in green. Green would be the new dates that we put in. So even though there's a strikeout there, these are new dates. Uh, that would that would be applicable, All right? <clears throat> and so in A, the last sentence, it says full-time employees who were on leave status or temporarily reassigned and thus were not properly evaluated during the 2021, I'm sorry, 21-22 school year will be treated for pay purposes as if they were effective, all right? And the next section we addressed uh, is number five in section eight. It says a daily rate of pay for permanent substitute employees effective July 1, 2021. Well, that would be, that date would change as well. Uh, we'll receive, I'm sorry. No, that date, the date is inappropriate. Let me start over. The daily rate of pay for permanent substitute employees, effective July, July 1, uh, will receive the same increase as that of a grandfathered highly effective teacher. And basically what that is saying is the same thing that's in the first sentence in Section A over in, at the beginning of this section. If you notice, it says if effective July 1, 2021. And again, we have to change the dates because uh, that would be 2022, all employees, including permanent substitutes, will receive, you know, that highly effective rate. So we're just, this is where it shows up in the contract as well, and so we just want to make sure that we include it there. All right? Is that understood? Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, now what you have before you is Appendix A, Open Range Grandfathered and Performance Pay Salary Schedules. Okay, again, the same is in blue. This is what we'll have to go through once we, you know, decide on, uh, come to agreement on salary. Uh, what we're proposing uh, in the chart there at the, the bottom part of the page uh, was a annual recurring supplement amount, and last year, you see the strikeouts, and we're adding uh, an amount, we're increasing that supplement amount. All right?
And then in number three, with uh, speech pathologists, the position of speech pathologists meeting requirements, uh, school psychologists, occupational phys and physical therapists, audiologists, and ROTC employees shall be paid based upon experience appropriate uh, advanced degree and, if applicable, national certificate. Notwithstanding Article 8, Section A or, or Paragraph 6 below, the minimum entry level for the above position shall be an annual base salary of equivalent to 8680 uh, greater than the agreed upon minimum salary uh, per year. All right? And, uh, and then otherwise, un unless it's stipulated in this agreement. Basically, right here, what we're saying is when we went from 40, from 41,000 to 47.5 salary schedule, there was a, uh, an increased amount to attract more people in these areas because they were hard to fill. And uh, when we changed, we didn't change with that gap being the same. And so we just want to make sure that that gap stays the same so that, number one, we'll be able to attract those people to the positions that, that, are, that we're, uh, we have, where we have huge vacancies. And, and so that's what we're asking for in, in this proposal as it relates to, to these employees. All right? And then number six, we're asking for a mentoring supplement of $1,000 should be given to T-Bargaining Unit members employed as of July 1, 2022, who meet eligibility criteria to be determined by both parties within 60 days of the ratification of this agreement. In this section, what we're asking for is a supplement, because we know that our teachers, uh, our current teachers, are going to have to work extra hard to help the new teachers coming in, even those with education backgrounds that are new, they're going to need support from our current teachers, but even more so, those coming in without any kind of education background at all, who've never written a lesson plan, they're going to need support of, of our teachers. And so we want to uh, try and find a way in which we can uh, develop a process for those teachers to receive services from our expert uh, teachers, you know, who are pr presently in the field. And those are our proposals for, uh, you know, Article 8, Section A, and Appendix A. Questions? Nope. And it, as far as our, our counter response to the, the bulk of the salary proposal, the reason that we're, we're sitting back on that is just to, we need the context of your responses to some of the ancillary items. That was my next question. That's yeah. what I figured. Okay. So d depending on the district's position on some of those items, that'll inform one of a number of counters that we have prepared. Understood. Okay. If uh, then, if you have nothing else to to share at this time, we'd like to caucus, and and um, we have reserved um, room D over there. If, so, so that means uh, for 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 the for the group that's not caucusing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I just. I won't say it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you. Did you see what caught me? Can I get this the last time? Yeah, I'm gonna put them. I think you did. <laughs> this one, uh, that one, or a gray one. These are mine. You, you don't have to pass them out, yeah. Because it's storm in my house yesterday, and I didn't know how. It's 
Okay. So, um, getting to your your uh, proposals from today, uh, not evaluated um, teachers to get the same increase percentage increase that the effective get. We uh, we agree to that. And um, during last session, I know I passed out a, a model that built that into it as well so so that you could see what it you know the the percentages look like after that um, the permanent sub so asking that it was the highly effective rate um, that from what I'm looking at it it comes on that model it comes to 3.5 percent so that it's exactly the same so we're fine with however we write that language um, they would get the the 3.5 though that's really what it is for permanent subs uh, for grandfather supplements so really on that um, you know, we, we think that this was of great value last session, but with the law changing July 1 and per the state, we're just, we're not able to, to do this. Um, for the SLP, uh, the, the increase to the SLPs, um, school psychologists, um, let me get it, make sure I include all of them. Um, where am I looking here? Appendix A, uh, item three, you know, where the annual base salary equivalent to 80, 8,680 greater than the agreed upon minimum salary each year. Uh, we do agree to that. So. Uh, we understand that there's a, you know, it's a very competitive area and, um, you know, to, to be able to compete, we, we, we will make that increase. Uh, this, the mentoring supplement, um, I think that we have a lot more work that needs to maybe go into that in determining how, you know, we have seen some other districts that do that, um, but there's some work to be done before we would be willing to, to go ahead and, with any type of mentoring supplement. Would that be, <clears throat> would that be discussions before, prior to negotiations next year or as a part of negotiations next year? Um, it, it could be either. We're, we're willing to, to sit down and talk about that um, and, and possibly develop some recommendations. Uh, on one, one item, I just want to point out, uh, Mr. Preddy noticed, uh, cost of, on uh, page 116, negotiated cost of living adjustment of 95%. Uh, <laughs> Not signing it. <laughs> the value of, of decimal points, right? Man, that would be record, record increases. <laughs> no, we, we didn't need a decimal point there, did we? <laughs> no, but that's in the blue, so that's, not some, that's something that we have to I understand. With. I fully understand, uh, but just right, point we'll, it out. Just, All right, well, thank you for making that point. <laughs> now, now, now um, in response to some of your, your uh, proposals during last session's meeting, uh, one was to provide a uh, supplement to ESE teachers. And um, as we've discussed, differentiated pay supplements is something that we're doing now, and we feel that there is, again, in this area as well, work to be done to uh, really add value to these supplements and in targeting areas that are critical to fill and sometimes come with, you know, a, a significant um, amount of work in addition to some, some other areas. So uh, right now you can see that's what the, the current language is. And down here, the proposed language, what we're, we're, not, we're not taking this out, but we're adding to it. Um, effective July 1st, 2022, teachers assigned to the job codes listed below will receive a differentiated pay supplement amount of $1,000 per school year. So the list that we had last time, um, we have a lot of job codes and um, you know we combed through it to make sure that we weren't missing anyone. Um, so item, people, we added to the, the proposal to include employees that also fell under the um, ESC umbrella, let's say. So uh, those added were the ESC coordinators, occupational therapists, 
physical therapist, homebound, teacher homebound, ESC audiologist, and ESC mm -hmm. other. So, forget how many employees. Do you remember how many employees? 193 employees, so uh, it, additional uh, to what was in the previous in, in the proposal. So we we didn't want to leave them out. We'd probably get a 190 some calls on that one for sure, and, and it's so we feel this is the right thing to do, um, and that would fall under the differentiated um, differentiated pay supplements. So. And going here, this is the next paragraph of it that explains how you, what you're able to get where it's the maximum differentiated pay supplement an employee may receive is $300, which wouldn't work anymore. Um, with the exception of the employees assigned to the ESC job codes listed above is $300. But the maximum differentiated pay supplement to a, an employee assigned to one of the ESC job codes listed above is $1,200 because they can get, they can still get it for Title I school being at a D or an F, but they would not get the third $100 group for being in one of these areas because they are getting the 1000 okay? Any questions? Just a appreciation for the increased list. We did receive a number of, you know, emails from other groups of, of ESC job titles and ESC coordinators certainly was one of them. Um, and we appreciate the district's willingness to expand that list. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so the, the, I already said the, the permanent substitute, um, moving them up, this is basically, this is the 3.5% increase. So that's what we are proposing, um, which is in agreement with your proposal. Um, we were, I, I basically added this just to strike it because it, I don't know when this was added, but it was in the contract and I don't know um, that this is still happening. That was relative to the, the original referendum increase four years ago that led to the supplements and yeah, I, I don't think we have a problem with that because okay. obviously we anticipate perpetuating that as long as the taxpayers will have it. Right, okay. All right, uh, let's see, in the last session, you asked for the district to bring retired uh, pers instructional personnel back at uh, $5,200 above the minimum. And we also discussed looking at, well, what would that cost and what would it look like, you know, to bring them up to the actual number of years of experience that they have, right? So if they have, you know, up to 25 years, which is what we accept, what would the cost look like if we if we considered all of their years of experience? And Mr. Mitchell did a, a great job going through that, pulling all of the retired uh, personnel we've rehired um, to find out that it, we think it's in our best interest um, and, and the unions as well to uh, increase that to allow for up to 25 years. So if they have 25 years, they would go to the max on our new hire placement schedule. Um, we would think that opens up a lot of opportunity to bring some teachers back who have retired and who aren't ready to, you know, call it quits, have some teaching left in them. And um, so, uh, and we all know we need teachers, right? So um, we, we are removing that. And what this says is really uh, effective July 1st. So we're not going back. Like, let's say we hired them two years ago, we're not going back and, and finding that difference in those years to add to their salary, but going forward, it's really on a go forward basis, um, they'll, they'll be you know, placed on the new hire salary placement schedule based on the number of verified prior years of public and or private school, successful teaching experience not to exceed 25 years. And these reemployed retired personnel will not be eligible for any back pay for service as it relates to years of experience. So anything before, July 1st, 2022, we're not, we're not going to go back. Mark. Yeah, I just want to specifically clarify. So um, the new hire placement schedule that's in the contract right now, so the first thing we'll do sequence-wise is bring, like let's say you had 25 years, right? We'll bring you to that 25 years on the new hire placement schedule in effect today, right? 
and then we'll provide the increase that we agree to in the bargaining agreement, whether it's, you know, 3.5, two and a half, right? And I, I think that would be everybody's intent. So I just wanted to clarify that that's the proposal. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> will, uh, will the placement schedule be affected by this in any way? Well, the, as part of these negotiations, uh, uh, we'll be increasing the uh, new higher placement schedule. Uh, the, these, I guess it's the years zero through 14 right now is at the minimum, right? So Correct. Right. I think the proposal, whatever we agree to, that minimum is going to increase. That placement schedule zero through 14 will increase that amount. And then 15 through 25 will increase the smallest increase that goes to any of the effective employees after we come to agreement. Okay. Does that, that make sense? That's what, okay, that's what I wanted to find out. Yes, sir. Next uh, was a proposal regarding the reading endorsement for elementary teachers. So what we've got here is secondary schools. This is the current language. It was really uh, $1,103 uh, that was, it was raised to. But so we are in agreement to offer this to both elementary and secondary school teachers um, who has or adds a reading endorsement on his or her Florida State Department of Education issued teaching certificate, making the employee eligible, uh, certified to teach reading at the secondary level or elementary courses where the reading endorsement or reading certification is required. Employees who receive this supplement are required to maintain the reading endorsement on his or her teaching certificate while employed with the district as a member of the bargaining unit. Uh, the reason that that was put in there, if they leave the bargaining unit, then, you know, they, they might, there might their certificate might just expire or something like that, but we really strongly felt that if we pay for you to add this or, or have it, that you should be required to maintain it. Um, district may retrieve the supplement from the employee's pay if the employee removes the re-endorsement from his or her certificate. I, <laughs> questions on that? Uh, the rest, these are just, I cleaned it up so we can have a, a clean version of, of the, the changes where it said, you know, they'll go up, um, you know, this year, uh, or, or you know, all, cleaning up all the supplement prices um, that, that we had in the last session. So those are all in there. And, um, and the preamble, I added that in here as well, but it's, it's not any different than what yours is, so. So that is it. So on the preamble part, since we don't have anything in writing, we're basically going with what we presented. Yeah, let me get to it. Uh, was that it? Yes. Uh, no. I had it in there somewhere. There it is. All right. So it's it's. The same, I, I went through an old contract and found, you know, basically it's the language is exactly the same. So, um, of what you can open the first year of the agreement and the second year of the agreement. Good. Okay. The only thing I'd ask is that, and we I think we did this in the past, <coughs> relative to 
the various committees that, that we created to discuss or study issues. Um, in past contracts, if it was you could reopen next year with four items, it would be like four items plus right. items related to, like, so um, we did something like this with bereavement, you know, before this past year, and it was you could, the language would have been it was open book this year, but it would have been, you know, in addition to bereavement, four items. Right. I, I, I understand. I've seen that before. And yeah, we, we'd agree to that. Okay. So we'll, we can add that for sure. Thank you. So do you need some time to caucus now? Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll go over there. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, All <we> right. <laughs> Everybody here? Okay. Okay. I think uh, we're all back and ready to go. The uh, with the preamble, you know, we're in a, an agreement with that. Except we just want to make sure that we have a spot in there where, uh, in addition to the two appendices and the four sections and salary uh, and in, in, in Article Eight, as well as salary in the in the appendix, that we add those two. Uh, committees that we, we included to establish as a part of that, because we could bring those items up as an item during the time we do negotiations, if we come up with a decision, you know, with a plan in either one of those. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So we just want to make sure that it's understood that we can bring those in, those in items in. Right. To, yes. In addition. Okay. <clears throat> the SLP. Uh, uh, agreement. We're in agreement with that. I mean, it was hard, but we yeah. accept. <laughs> and the same with the retired. Okay. Uh, and uh, with the ESC, uh, I, I guess our, our our question there is: uh, we just want to make sure that people who are in those, and Kevin can probably answer this, you know, better than anyone. If if I have if I'm a 0.5 ESC, do I get 0.5 of the, of the supplement? Yes. It's part of the, um, of the language. Um, part-time employees. So the second section of, the, of that is part-time employees would be paid a prorated portion of the, of the annual supplement. OK. And I guess. Uh, more so than just the, the part time, we want to try and look at if, if say, if I'm a regular teacher and uh, and I'm placed in an ESC position, you know, will my job code change so that I'll be I will qualify for this supplement? Just trying to see how it's going to be administered. If you move out of it, it's it, and, and this is no new language. Okay, um, this is existing language. Um, Employees who 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 change whose change in assignment make them no longer eligible for a supplement during the school year will have that supp supplemental pay stopped at the time he she is no longer eligible. Right, and so you're asking now go on the other side of it going into it. Okay, I'm guessing right. They get it right. 
or just we want to make sure just um, yes yes that's the next sentence we'll have their supplemental pay begin at the time he she becomes eligible we also just want to make sure that that clerically that if someone's at a school and they're certified for ESC but are teaching non ESC and then are you know my tentative assignment for the next year or maybe somebody leaves and they change my assignment that would cover that going into we just want to make sure that they're they're properly classified to be deemed eligible and that it's not that you know you're having me start to teach those classes but I'm a I'm on the books as a different category we just want to make sure for for clarification sake that people aren't people are moved and their titles correspondingly changed they're not moved and I'm told that's my new assignment but in on the books on the records I'm still teacher something else so that would be based on job code correct and if they were assigned to a specific duty and that duty was servicing students with disabilities that job code would need to reflect it okay uh, right and, and we thought that but we just want to yeah you know all right okay so the ESC is good all right uh, permanent sub increase uh, it's not the same as a you know highly effective but but it's good it's a, well, wait a second how I thought it was on, on the, the grandfather highly effective is three 3.5 oh, three point Remember, five. Okay. yeah okay All right. okay good thank you mm -hmm. I'm sorry permanent sub okay three five okay all right and so uh, obviously the last one is the the reading all right of course we have a challenge with uh, with, with two things of it and, and one is uh, the fact that um, their inability to remove it and then if they did remove it the repayment of the of the supplement uh, our counter to that uh, because we kind of uh, and that was basically the bulk of our conversation while we were in here is to try and look at that from all angles and, and what's all involved as it relates to how it impacts secondary teachers because uh, this is something new for secondary teachers as well it's not just elementary uh, which is what we're trying to focus on and um, and, and we didn't want to you know r restrict teachers forever and, and this is a forever restriction and, and we didn't want that to happen so our basic proposal on this uh, uh, counter to this would be a uh, as of this would this rule would apply as of July 1 2022 of you must maintain it for five years you must maintain that endorsement on your certificate for a minimum of five years you know I can and, live with that okay all right really I mean the, the point is is you know Obviously, we, we know why we're giving this supplement out, right? right. We want, we, this is an, an area that we need to get people in. Um, the, the, the concern, and, and really, do I think this is some massive problem? No, I don't. I don't. But I do see the value in if I really, if we paid someone to do it and we really need them to do it, they should be there to do it, right? right. So that's sort of just our thought on it. We're not trying to we're not it was really just for that purpose that you know these are these are areas we we have required you know required to do something and so that was the way to do it but I can live with the five year all right and that, just to make sure we're on the same page that's for people who would obtain it moving forward so like if I got it four years ago and I got paid four years ago and I I dropped it this year somehow I wouldn't have to repay the thousand because I got it under the old rules so we just want to make sure that it's you have to maintain it for five years otherwise you pay the money back for anyone who obtains it starting now correct okay okay <clears throat> all right and hopefully they'll keep it longer than that hopefully they'll keep it on there right um, right you know and and um you know but right. and the other piece we we also we also understood is they won't lose the skill because whether it's on the certificate or not the teachers the, the students they teach will still be bene will still benefit from their expertise from a 
from a principal standpoint, it'll still give an inability to be able to put them in the required areas that the state requires a reading certified teacher. So the skill will still be there, but from a principal standpoint, we wouldn't be able to use it for that, that point. And then the other clarification and question I had is because some people will be receiving this $1,000, the, was it 1103 or something like that? Um, you said anybody who already, from July 1st, 2022, but it wouldn't be anybody who, and I don't know how to put this the right way, but anybody who receives the bonus as determined by what we're doing now. Correct. Not, not their date of certification, okay. but the date of payment for, for the endorsement, yes. Good clarification. Right. Good with that. All right, and on the, uh, our response to your salary proposal, uh, we accept the one where the not evaluated people are included in the effective salary, the one that says 3.55. I mean, no, right, the one that says 3.55. That's the correct chart? In the top right, you're talking about? In the top, in yes. the top right corner. Correct. Right. Yeah, so the, the numbers are 3.1, 3.5, 4.4. And then 3.5. Correct. And the highly effective version. Correct. Levels. And uh, and then obviously the 1,500 or three percent bonus. Correct. Well. A base salary. And it, I think that means we've got a deal, right? All right. That's what it means. All right. Well. I want to thank everybody uh, for your input, for your participation in this. I think um, getting to a, a three-year contract in what? Fourth, is this our fourth session, right? Yes. Might be a record, right? Um, <laughs> and, and I think we get there because we, I'm sorry? Correct, and, and you know, not, yeah, you know, only two sessions of actually talking about the money um, means I think that we all can see, it's, it's very clear that we all value our teachers and um, also we value the collaboration that we have right now uh, between the district and CTA and um, you know very excited for, for this teachers can get their money know that that we value them continue on with the rest of school year and we could continue uh, working together uh, right and, and, right and, and we definitely thank you for for hearing hearing us in terms of you know what our needs and concerns are and, and addressing those uh, especially some of those long-term issues that we've had you know, what we felt that, that, that there was need to be addressed and, and you're addressing those, we definitely appreciate that. Absolutely. So thank you all, thank you, the whole team. Thank you all very much. I just right. wanted and to thank you team, uh, CTA team. You know, thank you all very much. Uh, all right, so this will be good. added to the board agenda on uh, next Wednesday, the 21st. Okay, and, and- And we still have to wait, now that we have a final plan, we can submit it to the Florida Department of Ed for approval. Okay, so, so what's left for us is for you and I to you know, get together and map out the, the uh, tentative agreement yep. so that we can print it up and distribute it to the bargaining unit members or, and for the board as well so, right. uh, so we can you know, get that moving. Yep. Um, right. I'm and, and our ratification will start as, as, as soon as we can you know, put things in place. Okay. Uh, uh, so we'll, we'll be okay. working. All right. Good. Thank you all very much. All right. Thank you.